Okay, we're recording. Welcome everybody to today's live webinar. We are covering Intro to the Internet Part 1 for today. Part 2 will be next week, December 7th. But before we get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Rebecca Van Dusen, and I am a library associate here at the Champaign Public Library. If you've attended any tech workshops, you've probably seen me helping with those or teaching. I also teach uh, particularly some of the ebook classes and the iPhone, Apple stuff, because I like that kind of stuff. Uh, I also work at the information desk at the library, so you may see me there. Before I introduce our technology librarian, Susan Winkler, I'd like to mention some Zoom features available to you. If you hover your mouse near the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see some controls will pop up. At the bottom left, you can adjust your audio settings like changing your speaker or microphone. Moving towards the center, you'll see a chat bubble and a raise hand option. So your chat bubble will let you type out questions to us. So during the webinar, while Susan's doing the um, covering the slides and doing demonstrations, um, I may be relaying her messages from you in the audience. Maybe you have questions or comments. I can relay those to her. Uh, there are hand, the raise hand button is there in case you would rather speak your question out loud using your microphone. So I know sometimes if we're typing a big question, it just takes forever and it's not very fun. So we have that raise hand option in case you want to speak your question instead. Um, and of course, at any time, feel free to ask questions. Don't feel like you're interrupting us or anything. That's what we're here for. So please write those in the chat if you have any, or of course, raise your hand. Um, so if you click on that chat button, it should open a box where you can then type in your question. Um, I think that's pretty much all I have to, to cover. Like I said before, we're going to have part two next week. And we do have our December webinars available to sign up right now through our website. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and introduce our technology librarian, Susan Winkler. How are you today, Susan? Hi, I'm good, Rebecca. How are you? I'm doing good. Great. It, it um, does look like we have a raised hand, speaking of yes, raised hands. Yeah, um, I was just going to go ahead and quickly mention, too, that we are recording today's session, but we do not see your videos. Um, so you don't have to worry about being on camera at all. Uh, so we don't see you and we will send out today's recording uh, in a follow up email so that you can watch it along with any follow up questions or things that we get us today. So I'll let you go ahead and address the raised hand. Yeah, let's see if we can go ahead and let this person talk here. So you should be good to go with your question. You'll just want to unmute your microphone if you're able to ask a question. If not, that's OK. OK, now that was my question, whether video was uh, crippled or whether my setup was messed up somehow. So anyhow, you answered my question before I could ask it. Great. Cool. Well, keep, yeah. keep, them, keep them coming. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll mute again. All right. OK, sounds yeah. good. We do want you to ask questions throughout, so feel free to put them in the chat or ask out loud. Um, you know, we we know that this is a situation where, as we go through stuff, you may have questions. So um, I also have slides where we'll pause for questions too, uh, but you're welcome to ask at any time. Okay. Yes. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start by sharing my screen. And we'll share our PowerPoint. And then um, Rebecca is also going to put this the PowerPoint slides in the um, in the chat for you too. So if you want to navigate to the handout to kind of follow along, you certainly can do that. Um, also, if you want to pick up a version of the handout that's in color, um, we can do that for you here at the library. Just let us know that you would like uh, a copy of the handout, and we can also do that for you. Um, if you don't want to keep a digital copy or print it yourself, we can print it for you. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and start. My slideshow. I'm hoping that you can see the uh, getting started PowerPoint slide yes. here. All right, for our intro to the internet. So um, here's our agenda for today. We're going to go over some terminology and descriptions. Uh, we won't go into a whole lot of history of the internet. Uh, we're going to focus more on the terms and the uh, vocab that you might use um, in your day to day with the internet. Uh, and then we'll talk about URLs and browsers, and we'll define what a URL is and what a browser is. Uh, we'll talk about tabs and windows and how those can help you with searching and navigating uh, when you're on the internet. And then we'll talk a little bit about things that you can use to search for stuff and tips 
um, that we have uh, tips, tips that librarians really like to share um, to help you get a really good search um, and a search string going on the, on the internet. And then we'll cover how to do bookmarks and uh, list favorite websites and how to kind of um, organize and uh, categorize those so that you can have them at the ready. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about clearing your internet history. Um, clearing your internet history is something that's important for uh, privacy and security. And um, it's also something that I think most of us maybe don't think about doing regularly, but we probably should do it regularly. Uh, and then we'll talk about some universal keyboard shortcuts and what those are. And then we'll have some time for additional resources. And then at next week's class, we'll delve into more of the privacy issues and security and um, things that you can do to help kind of protect yourself online. So, okay, any questions before we begin? I think we're okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put that handout into the okay. chat right now. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Rebecca. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. So some of the terminology you're going to want to know, obviously, the first term we're going to learn is internet, um, which basically means it's a system of computers and other devices and uh, that use things called network, where it means that they can access um, and call things from each other. Uh, and it's basically interconnected global computers uh, and allow people or other computers uh, and artificial intelligence actually now uh, to share information with one another. So it's basically a way to um, call up information from one device and get it to another device so that you can look at it. Okay. Um, you might have also heard of the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web is a portion of the internet. So the internet is kind of the all encompassing umbrella and the World Wide Web is a part of it. Uh, if you've heard of the web, it's kind of the same idea. It's the system of online documents that are linked together, um, essentially kind of like a spider web. Um, and that's where they sort of came up with the term World Wide Web or WWW. So if you recall when um, the internet was first being developed and first available commercially to people, many of the websites we would go to would start with WWW. That was the protocol for World Wide Web. It basically told the computer which part of the internet we were going to go to. Um, and it's still there, but most browsers basically add that in themselves. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. So um, I mentioned a browser. So if you're unfamiliar with the term browser, um, you've probably used them in your daily life already if you've got a smartphone um, or a computer. But it's basically a program that allows you to view websites and navigate between uh, websites and get you to the internet and the World Wide Web um, using links. Uh, it also is used to access web-based applications like your email, or you can store and access documents using web services like Google Drive or um, Apple iCloud. And those are also things that are called in general, the cloud which it, rather than it being a puffy cloud in the sky, um, it's basically just a term that means um, it's information that you've stored elsewhere that you can call up on whatever physical device you're on at the time, okay? So a browser essentially is like any other program on your computer that does a job. So Microsoft Word, for example, is a program on your computer that when you open it up, you can type and create letters and documents web browser is a spe specifically a program that lets you go to the web. And then here are some of the more common examples. It's not exhaustive. Um, there are several other browsers that you might have seen, especially if you have a smartphone or a tablet. For example, if you have a Kindle Fire, you might know of the Kindle browser, which is called Silk. Uh, that's their, their web browser that they have that comes on their devices. Um, you might also have seen thinking like, um, if you have an Android smartphone, a lot of times your Android smartphone will have a specific uh, internet browser that's developed by your, your brand or maker of your Android phone too. But these are some of the more common ones that you might see. Um, Apple Safari initially was just for Macs, um, but now they've, and like iPhones and iPads, but now they have expanded it out a little bit more so you can get it on some other devices. Um, generally, Microsoft Edge and Internet Explorer are going to be found on Windows computers. Those are what we call the native 
programs, which basically just means that they're um, that they're already installed usually on your computer. If you were to go to a retail store and buy a Windows computer, it would probably come with Microsoft Edge. Um, and Firefox and Chrome are two of the other major ones that are out there. Okay. And if you don't, if you don't already have more than one browser on your computer, um, I do recommend picking a second one, whichever one you want. We don't preface one over the other, um, but it's a good idea to have a second browser just because it's a way to help test whether or not something is going wrong with a website. Uh, and you need to figure out if it's the website that's the problem or if it's just not working well with your browser or if something else is going on. So it's a good way to troubleshoot to make sure you have at least two browsers. Okay, uh, any questions so far about browsers? I don't see any so far, but I like the okay. point that you made about the getting another browser because that happens pretty often if we have uh, pretty often patrons calling in and maybe they have a question about something not working on a website and we just say, hey, go ahead and try it on a different browser and see if you experience the same thing. Because a lot of times if they switch over, it ends up fixing their problem. Now that doesn't happen for everything, but it is usually one of the first things that I try. Same. Yeah, it's one of those first uh, troubleshooting things um, that we recommend. And uh, sometimes it, it happens to be that one a website might be coded so that it works a little better in one browser than it does in another. It just mm -hmm. depends. Um, search engines, however, are totally independent from your browser. And um, I like to make this, uh, this point pretty, pretty big uh, because a lot of times it can be very confusing when you say, you know, you've probably heard the phrase, let me Google that for you. Well, you can Google something without using the Chrome browser. So Google Chrome is the browser. Google is the search engine. So if I was to you, and um, if you see on our example here, Bing, Bing is a product by Microsoft. So Bing is the search engine for Microsoft, but the browser that uh, Microsoft has is Microsoft Edge. OK, so I could use my Google Chrome browser and search with Bing. OK, so they're independent from each other. You could use the Chrome browser and Google as your search engine if you wanted. You could use Microsoft Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge and Bing if you wanted, or you can pick a different search engine if you want. So one of the other search engines I've mentioned here is DuckDuckGo. Um, and then there's also Yahoo and there's there's um, there's a lot of search engines. So this isn't an exhaustive list by any means. Um, these are just some of the major ones uh, that are out there that you could certainly try if you wanted. Okay. So the big difference between the search engine and the browser is the browser is the program that gets you to the web and the internet. And then a search engine is the service you can use to search uh, for keywords in a website or return images and videos and relevant data. So it does, they are essentially independent from each other, but you can use the search engine once you're on a browser. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Okay, and of course, a website is basically a collection of web pages that provides information about a business or group or organization or person or anything really. Um, you know, we have a website, it's champagne.org for the Champagne Public Library. It includes multiple web, page, you know, multiple pages um, about our organization and what we, what we offer and our services that we provide. Uh, you might use News Gazette online and be able to look at the news articles, or, you know, you might use Facebook. Facebook is a website. Okay. A web page is basically a sp specific part of a website. And there can be multiple web pages in a website. Um, it's basically an electronic document written in a computer language that a browser then translates. So generally, it might include text, images, links to other pages, reference sources, all sorts of stuff. But essentially, what you need to know is that a web page is a basically a document that you can get to through a browser. And there's stuff going on behind the scenes that's what we call code um, for a computer code. Usually it's HTML or um, XHTML now too, or XML. Um, there's a bunch of different types of codes that happen behind the scenes and it all gets done in a computer language and then it gets presented to us visually so that we can read it. Okay. 
uh, homepage. The homepage of a website is uh, the page that gets served up as the site's starting point. It's also called the landing page. Uh, so if you're searching for a site, it's likely the page you'll see in search results first. So if you search for Champaign Public Library, the first site you would probably see is champaign.org or Champaign Public Library colon home. If you see over here on the left hand side, that would be our home page or our landing page, which would look like the um, image on the right here. Okay. So if you went to you know, Facebook, it would be facebook.com and it would be the screen where then you could log into your Facebook page. And that would be the home page for Facebook. Okay. Okay. And I mentioned this just a minute ago, the cloud. Um, cloud is a term used to describe web-based applications or files that are stored um, on a, and this is where it gets a little technical, but we'll, we'll, we'll uh, extrapolate on this in just a minute and kind of break it down. Um, a shared remote server accessible to users through a login. So for example, if you have a Google account and you go to your Google account and you go to Google Drive, Google Drive is like online storage. So you can put a file up there that you can store there. Then you could come to the library and use one of our computers, log into your Google account, pull up your Google Drive and access that same image. Okay, because it's on a remote server, which basically is a fancy way of saying um, it's shared some, it's stored somewhere else, and then your whatever computer or device you're on can call up and call to that other computer. Remember, it's a it's a network, and it can call up and say, "Hey, uh, my person on this end wants this file," and then you can go and grab it and and do something with it. Okay, so that's basically what the cloud means. Um, the reason we also have where it says web-based applications is because some things that you can do on a cloud-based system include things like Microsoft Word Online, which is basically in real time, you can type up your document um, and then save it. And you don't even have to save it, actually, it saves automatically. And that's a web-based application. So it's basically things that you do online for productivity and, and stuff like that. OK, um, so when we talk about the cloud and we actually do have a, a course entirely on um, cloud services and intro to cloud storage um, that you're welcome to take to, um, it'll be in the spring uh, will be the next time we run it. Uh, but definitely keep an eye out for that if you're if you're interested in learning more about the cloud. OK, I know there was a lot to cover to begin with. <laughs> Any questions so far? I don't see anything so far. OK, I'm going to do a quick demonstration of what I mean by home pages here and things like that. OK, so if, I'm hoping everybody can see champagne.org here. Rebecca, can you see the yes. champagne.org screen? OK, perfect. Sorry, so, my, my Zoom screen is kind of glitching out so I can't tell if I'm unmuted or not but okay I'm, I can I'm working on it <laughs> okay I can hear you right now too so thank you yep. um so for everyone if you can see up here where it says champagne.org that I just highlighted this is the home page for the library if I was going to do a search for this and again we can see right now I'll go ahead and give you a little example here of what I can do so I'm going to show you the different browsers here so we'll start with Firefox. So this is Firefox. And this is what our website looks like in Firefox, champagne.org. Um, if I go to Firefox's, basically if I go to the home page here on Firefox, it looks like this. So you can see it says Firefox here. If I search for the Champagne Public Library, like this, and I hit enter. You'll see here's where that comes up, where it says Champaign Public Library colon home. That's going to be our home page. So if I click on this, it takes me to champagne.org, just like this. OK, now if I was to do that on um, a different browser, oops, sorry, I have to switch back to switch to my other browser. Um, if I was to do that on Chrome, here's Chrome. And if I go to home, I can go to um, google.com go here's on chrome so we have google and if i do champagne public library like that also going to bring up champagne public library where it's our home go to that and it's going to be champagne.org 
Okay. Same thing is going to be true for Microsoft Edge, which is going to be, oops, right here. So here is our home page. This is Microsoft Edge. So if I go to the home screen, um, let's go to Google again, and we're just searching. But again, this is on Internet Explorer, so or um, on Microsoft Edge. So this is a different browser, and I'm going to search. And you're going to get the same thing here. So up here, this is actually an ad. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, but if you look down here, Champaign Public Library Home, same thing, takes us to our home page. So you get an idea. So your website here is going to be all of the pages that are encompassed at champagne.org. So if I clicked on, you know, adults or teens or anything else, this, these are all pages within the website for Champaign Public Library. And if I click on the logo, takes me back to the home page or landing page, which is champagne.org. Okay. All right. Hoping that all made sense. If you have any questions about that, let us know. And we'll jump back to our PowerPoint here. Okay. Okay. So a couple of things you need to know about um, searching and using the internet. The address bar is up at the top of the screen in pretty much every browser I've ever seen. Um, and it is where you can type the address of the website or, or uh, web page that you're going to go to, or you can search. So if you saw what I just did there where I typed in Champaign Public Library, I was searching across the top where the address bar is. It's kind of known as an omnibox, or it's basically the search box address bar um, kind of together, interchangeable. So that's at the very top of the page. And it's going to look, um, once you're on a site, it'll have that site's address there. And then you can just click on it and type over it for whatever you're searching for. So uh, the thing you need to know about addresses on the internet is that they are a lot like your home mailing address. So when you mail something to someone, you have to include their street, you know, their name, the street address, the city, the state, and the zip code, right? Well, websites have a similar structure to them of all the things you need to include. And uh, if you don't know the exact address, that's when you go ahead and search and use the search box to find it. Um, if you know the exact address, you can just go ahead and type it in. But it has to be exact because if you if you type in the wrong address, um, you may end up on some other site that you don't want to be on or your browser is going to maybe try to help you out and say, I think you might have meant this site instead. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that real quick. So, so, and I'm just going to go ahead and use Chrome for this example. Okay, so here's our website for Chrome, here's Chrome browser. And if I go to Google to search, so again, I put that up in the top here. This is our address box. If you can see where I'm highlighting here, this up at the address bar right up here where you see this little lock icon. We'll talk about what that means a little bit later on um, next week. But this is your address bar. It's also where you can search. So if I put Champaign Public Library up here, it's going to search for Champaign Public Library. If I go back to Google's home screen and I put it in down here where I see this search magnifying glass, it's going to do the exact same thing. It's going to search for Champaign Public Library. Okay, so you can either use the address bar up at the top or you can use the search bar. And that's what we call them. We call it the address bar up here and the search bar right here. Okay, any questions about that, about how to search? Well, we'll get into how to search, but how to, how to put in um, a site that you're searching for. Now, if you know the address, of course, you can type that in. So since I know champagne.org, I can type it in here up at the address bar and hit enter and that'll take me to the website. But if I didn't know the address, I can put in like this and hit enter, and then it'll bring me to um, the Champaign Public Library homepage. So I can get in there, okay? I'm hoping that makes sense for everyone. I don't see any questions so far, so I think we're okay. Okay, I'm gonna jump back to the PowerPoint and we'll talk a little bit about URLs. 
All right. So the web address, like we just did, champagne.org, tells a computer the correct combination of letters, numbers, and or characters to reach a particular website. Um, URL, if you've ever heard someone say, well, just type in the URL. URL and ad web address basically mean the same thing. URL is just the fancy, the, well, it's the, the computer terminology. So it's the uniform resource locator. It basically means um, it's like your mailing address, right? So you're gonna use a uniform resource later, locator or URL to then tell the computer uh, where you want it to go on the web, okay? Um, it doesn't contain any spaces and it requires correct spelling. So it can begin with www, um, HTTP or HTTPS. Almost everything should hopefully begin with HTTPS now. Um, the S it stands for secure. It's a, it's a protocol to help um, make things a little bit more um, secure and use something called encryption, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but whenever you enter a website address, hopefully um, you may not even have to enter that first part, the www that stands for the World Wide Web or the HTTPS, um, because your browser is going to do that for you. So if you saw what I did where I typed champagne.org, the actual website address has that HTTPS in front of it, <clears throat> but we didn't have to type that in. The browser knew that that's what we wanted in there and it put it in there for us. <clears throat> but in general, you do have to put in the exact at a website address if that you that you want to go to. Okay. Oops, come on. There we go. So a couple of things to know about parts of that address um, beyond the www. Uh, the domain is usually the last few letters of the address. It's usually after the punctuation, after the period. And it will usually give uh, an indication about the type of site that you're visiting. So you know, if you were going to visit uh, target.com or walmart.com, um, .com usually stands for commercial business or company. Um, .org usually stands for a nonprofit, like champagne.org for the library. Um, .gov is usually a government agency, like irs.gov. Um, .info is more, a little bit more nebulous, um, but just means it's considered an informational site. Um, .edu, like illinois.edu, would be an educational institution. Um, .net is usually an internet service provider like att.net or and .mil is usually a branch of the military. Um, you can also see things like .us for the United States or .co for Colorado. It just depends on um, what kind of site you're trying to visit. But this is important uh, when you're trying to evaluate what sites you're at and what site you're visit visiting and making sure that you're getting to the correct site for the information you need. So if you went to irs.org, it might be a totally different website than irs.gov. Also, I don't know if irs.org exists. That's just me using it as an example. Um, so please don't, don't just go out and go to irs.org instead of .gov. <laughs> okay. Um, but just, just know that uh, it's good to know the domain name. Uh, nowadays too, you can find domains that kind of have anything. Um, we were just, uh, Rebecca and I were just looking some up before class um, to see what are some of the newer examples. And we had .io, which is usually going to be for um, like startup companies. Uh, let's see, what else did we have? I wrote them down. I wrote some of them down. Um, we had uh, .club and .fit for like a health organization. So um, it's no longer a tried and true, always correct that they will follow in, fall into these categories. Um, but do notice the domain, um, of whatever site you're visiting. Okay. If there's questions about that, please feel free, um, pop them in the chat or go ahead and raise your hand and ask them out loud. I'm going to take a quick sip of my water here. And then we'll move on to talking about the buttons and icons. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about buttons and icons that you might see on browsers. So when you're using a browser, um, there are a couple of things that you might wanna do uh, that fall under the term navigation. So if you're on a site and you want to go back one spot, 
to a previous page. You, the left button, left icon here, will take you back one screen. The forward button will take you forward one screen, meaning if you had visited a bunch of different pages, you can go back and forth between them. Um, the refresh and reload is the one that looks, to me, it looks a little bit like the recycle symbol, <laughs> but it also looks like um, if you have like a washing machine and it kind of looks like the agitate button. Anyway, um, refresh or reload basically means that if for some reason your site that you're going to didn't load properly the first time or um, it's taking a really long time to load pictures or it's just spinning, um, you can refresh or reload the page. Sometimes this is useful if you're on your email and you're waiting for a specific email to come through and it hasn't come through yet. You can refresh or reload the page to see if it then pops up. Okay. And then the home button, if you see something that looks like a little house, usually is the home button, which re returns you to the designated home page that you've set for the browser. So this is not to be confused with the home page of a, of a website, but this is something you can specifically uh, program in and, and set on your browser. And we'll talk a little bit about how to do that, where you can tell it, okay, anytime my browser loads, I want it to start with this page. So let's say every time you get up in the morning, you really want to know what's going on in the news. So you go to CNN.com and you want CNN.com to be your the first site that comes up on your browser all the time. You can do that. Here at the library, it's our, it's champagne.org because we all, um, all of our public computers um, in the library, they have a, a, a home page for the computer that will come up and it's the library's um, computers page. Makes total sense. Uh, so the home button, you can define what you want it to do for your home, but then it'll take you to that, that home landing site that you want. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate these real quick. And we'll pick um, Firefox for this. And I'm just going to use different browsers throughout. So you get the idea that a lot of the browsers, they're very similar um, in the functions and kind of how they're set up too. It just comes down to which ones you have a preference for using. OK. OK, so here I am, and I'm on champagne.org. And we're spending some time looking at these buttons in the far left corner. Okay, so here is our back button, which will, and if you hover over it, eventually you'll see the, um, the uh, alt text pop up that will tell you that you can go back. This is what you use to go back one page. Um, this is what you could use to reload the current page, or you can go to your home page. Okay, so if I start with champagne.org, and let's go ahead and say we're going to go visit our adult section of the site. And if you saw where it said loading there for just a second, where it says loading, if for some reason it says loading, 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 and it doesn't load, that's when you might use your refresh or reload current page button to see if it actually would start and, and load it. Okay, so now we're on our tech workshops page. Let's say I want to go back just to the regular adults page. I can hit that back button and it'll take me back one step in my process of going from page to page on this website. Okay, so it's going to take me back one step. And then if I want to go home, I hit that and it'll take me back to my home page. Now, right now, Firefox is set up with the default home page, which is just um, the default for Firefox. OK, any questions about that? I think we're OK so far. My Zoom is a little weird, so I hope okay. I'm not missing any questions. It's like I'm seeing you, but I'm not seeing my controls and I'm not able to click on the participants. Okay, or I'll chat. double check and make sure I don't see any questions in chat at the moment. Okay, cool. Uh, or any raised hands myself too, but I will keep keep an eye on that as well. Okay, so, thank you, Susan. Absolutely. Okay, so the next thing I want to cover is um, the recent browser history. And the recent browser history is something that you can also find when you click on the back button. So if I click on the, if I'm hovering over the back button here, you can see that I have two options. It says go back one page. It's just to click the arrow. If I right click or I pull down, I can show the history. So if I click on that, now I've just done a right click on my um, uh, mouse button here, right mouse, right click on the mouse. I can see the last 
number of whatever I visited. So I went to the adults page. I went to champagne.home, uh, the home page for the library. I searched for the library. Um, I And then I have some other stuff that I looked at earlier today. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that is my recent browser history. You can also get to this on the other um, the other browsers pretty much the same way. So I'm going to stop sharing that and I will jump into, we're going to do Chrome here real quick. So here's Chrome and you can see the same thing up here. I've got the left mouse button or I've got the left back button, the forward button, the refresh button. I don't have the home button because I can just hit right here on Google and it'll take me back home. I could add that in there if I wanted it though, so that I could see it. Um, I could I could customize that experience and put that icon up there if I wanted to. Um, but here at the same thing, if I right click, I get my list of um, sites that I've seen, the recent history, things that I visited today. Okay. And it'll be the same. That's the same with Edge too. Okay. All right. Any questions about recent browser history? So if I was trying to remember what I had visited uh, like 10 minutes ago, I could come in here and say, oh yeah, I was at the University of Illinois page. Click on it, go right to the University of Illinois page. Then when I click here again, oops, when I click here again, I can see the um, history of what I was looking at and when I was looking at it. Okay. And then here's my forward button. So if I just go forward, that's going to take me to the next thing. I went to explore.org. Um, we do have sound there. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else had the sound. It was in my speakers. But um, if I want to go forward to a new page, I just click on that and ca can go forward to most recent that I visited. Okay. Questions about your buttons on the left, the left hand side of your browser? That's pretty standard. And that's what the, most of them will look like. I don't see anything. Okay. Uh, if we want to, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next thing, which is talking about settings in the browsers. So this is probably, if there's one thing I want you to really take away from today, it's that you can customize some things about your experience when you're on the internet and on the World Wide Web using your browser. Okay, so you can change some of your settings, you can customize it to how you want it to be. So to get to your settings, if you're on Chrome, like I am here, on the right hand side, you're going to see three little dots in a vertical arrangement. If, and you see when it pops up, it says customize and control Google Chrome. So if I click on this, then I can pick my settings down here. I'm hoping you can see settings. Um, and I can customize my experience. So I can choose whether I, or not I want uh, passwords to autofill, if I want payment methods to be memorized, if I want addresses to be memorized. Um, there's a whole section for privacy and security. We'll talk about this more next week. Um, but you can clear your browsing data, meaning you can clear that history. So up here on the, to the, when I click on the left um, arrow here and I go back and I want to see my history, I can see what I've done. But if I don't want to do it there and I want to get rid of that altogether, I can come in here to the privacy and security and I can clear that browsing data. I can clear the cookies. I can clear all of this other stuff that I want um, to make things run better. Okay. I can also, under appearance, I can choose a theme. So if I want it to look a little bit different, I can make it look a little different. Here's where I could say, okay, I want to see that home button. And then it's going to be, and I can enter a custom website address for that home button. So like I talked about here now, up at the top left corner, if you can see in our, we now have four icons up here instead of three, and one of them is the home page. So we could set that to be champagne.org here. Then it's gonna be saved. The next time I open my browser and I hit the home button, it'll send me to champagne.org, okay? Uh, the bookmarks bar, we're going to show that. You can see that along the top here. These are some things that we've already identified as bookmarks, and we'll talk about bookmarks in just a minute uh, to make it easier for you. But this is just know that you can you can choose to show it or not show it. Okay. Um, you can even set your search engine. So remember how we talked about your search engine and your browser are different. So even though I'm using Chrome as my browser, I could check my search engine and change it. So maybe I want to use DuckDuckGo instead. So I'll change that to DuckDuckGo. 
And that's going to be the default search engine that comes up when I open Chrome now. OK, um, default browser just means that that's the browser that um, when you click on a link, it's going to open in that browser. Just like other default programs on your computer, you can change this. Uh, you can make Edge your default, or you can make Chrome your default, or Firefox, or if you're on a Mac, you can make um, Safari as the default, but you can make Chrome or, or Firefox the default. Okay. Um, on startup, here are things that, you know, if you want to open a specific set of pages. So you should, hopefully, this is giving you kind of the idea of what you can do with your settings and how you can customize your experience um, by doing different things to, to change those. Okay. And you can do that in all three browsers. Um, I encourage you to take a look at what you can see and what you can change. Um, I encourage you to change one thing, try it out, see how it looks. If you don't like it, change it back, then move on to another thing to change. And then, you know, so do, do one at a time so you can really see how it affects what you're doing and whether or not you like it, okay? Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure there's no chat questions here good and if you want um if you want to send a question feel free um i'm going to go ahead and move on we're going to talk about tabs and windows now and i'm going to go ahead and close out of settings and we'll use we'll use chrome to start with for this too so here i have one window if i minimize or make it smaller i can do the same thing with all of them but you're gonna see just the one. So if I make it smaller, it's still one window and I can do other windows if I want. Um, with Zoom, it's a little hard to show both unless I'm in the browser version. Um, so we're gonna kind of wing this a little today, uh, but I will show you how to do tabs, which make life a lot easier I think when you're searching for stuff online and you want to check out things and kind of keep a list. So let's do an example. Does anyone want to put an example in the chat of something they would have searched for or uh, maybe maybe an appliance that they're interested in buying and they want to know who's got the best price or um, something along those lines? If you want, go ahead and throw it into the chat and then we'll kind of use that as an example. So let's say we're searching for a household appliance. So we go ahead and give me an example of a household appliance we might search for. Anybody have an example they wanna use? Okay, if not, I'm gonna go ahead and use washing machine because that is the one I typically go for. So I'm a, so if you see up here at the top, and actually I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh that. And you'll see when I click up here and we go back to Google and I come up here, this is now gonna search up here at the top. This is now gonna search DuckDuckGo because I just changed that. So let's go ahead and put in washing machine. And now you'll see it says up here DuckDuckGo.com and my search for washing machine. Okay, so here's what comes up first. Um, I have the chance to search all or images or videos or um, to look at stuff with shopping. So maybe I'm gonna go and say, okay, well, I wanna look at what Lowe's has, but I also wanna look at Home Depot and I also wanna look at Best Buy. So what can I do to make sure I can look at all of these and go one by one through them? Well, one of the ways I might do that is to open a new tab. If you see this little plus sign, I can open a new tab and then I can search Lowe's washing machines like this to get exactly what I want to be from Lowe's. Or I can right click on this specific site and note here, we're going to talk a little bit more about this in a second too, but do you know, do you see where it says add at the end? It says washing machine Lowe's official site add. This means that that's an ad. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing that it's an ad. Just want you to be aware that ads, um, it's pretty subtle when something is an ad. Okay. So if I don't want ads, I'm going to come down a little bit lower and I'm going to say, okay, here it says washing machines at Lowe's. If I right click, I can say open link in new tab. And voila, 
If you look up here at the very top where you see my search results, and then here is my tab of all the washing machines at Lowe's currently. Okay, I can come back to that first tab. I can come down a little bit further and say, okay, I definitely want to look at what's at Menards. Right click, open a new tab, and then that'll pop it up there as well. So now I have two tabs up here, one with Lowe's, one with Menards. Come back to that first tab and I can say, let's see, where else would I like to look? Do I want to look at Sears? Sure. So right click and say, open a new tab, and then I can get Sears too. Okay, so this is one, this is one example of, at least for me, how I use tabs in my daily existence of where I am, you know, if I'm researching or searching for a specific product, I will pull up the different sites that have it and compare the prices, compare what they tell me about the machine, um, and all of that kind of stuff. Now, I will also say when I search for washing machines, I usually check consumer reports, uh, which the library does have free access to consumer reports here in the building, or if you have a champagne card. Um, so that's another thing to consider if you're gonna do something like this, where it's household appliances or um, electronics and things. We have consumer reports, so you can use it through the library. Okay, so that's just one example uh, of how you can use tabs. Now, if you wanna close a tab, all you have to do is click that little X in the top here, and that'll close out of that tab. I can do that for all three of these. And this is something that I do all the time that I don't mean to do. I will accidentally close out of tabs that I didn't mean to close. All I have to do to get them back, though, is uh, there's a keyboard shortcut I could use, or I can use the... Um, uh, my keyboard shortcut, which I believe is, I'm trying to remember, I think it's control shift T. Control shift T will bring back my most recent tabs. Okay, so here comes back the Sears. So when I happen to do that, I can go back in and do it this way and bring those tabs back. Okay, um, you can also do control T as a keyboard shortcut to get a new tab to open. And you can do, uh, let's go back to, for example, here's our, our library tab. And if I wanted to business and career, um, let's say I wanted to open visit, I could right click and say open a new tab. And then if I want to close this, I can do control W and that will close the tab. Okay, just like clicking on the little X. Okay, so keyboard shortcuts are also kind of nice. And your handout has a list of keyboard shortcuts that work across all the browsers too. Okay. So that's multiple tabs and how to how to close open them and close them. Does anybody have questions about using tabs? I find it to be a super efficient, helpful, pro, helpful with productivity. Um, we do have a contest here at work to see how many tabs someone can have open at a time. Um, just an, in, an informal informal contest um, each time we're on the desk to see how many tabs we can have open at once. And you can have a whole bunch of them if you'll see here. And what will happen is as soon as you just, as you add more, you see how they get a little bit smaller. So there's really no limit to how many you can add here, um, just so that it still makes sense and is efficient for you to have them. Um, and you can X out of individual ones and you can jump around to X out of them and navigate between them as well, okay? So that is something that can be helpful as you're starting to do um, search searching on the internet for different things. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and close those out. You can also close all of them at once with a keyboard shortcut, but I won't do that right now. Okay, any questions about tabs? I don't see anything so far. Okay, so tabs are one of my one of my favorite things to use. Um, the other thing I sometimes use is multiple windows. And it's the same principle. Uh, what I can do to show it is I will go ahead and go to champagne.org here. And then if I want to open something in a new window, you'll see this when I click on it. So if I click on visit with my right mouse button and we have the option to open link in a new tab or open link in a new window, we'll talk about incognito mode in just a minute. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and say open link in new window. And then it's going to open it in an entirely new window. So I'm wondering if you, uh, Rebecca, right now, can you see the home page? Yes. Or the visit. Okay. Can you see visit? 
I can see it's like highlighted in black. Okay. I'm, so I'm not if sure I, if that's what you mean. If I pop them together like this in two tabs, can you see them both now? Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yes, I see both of them. Okay. So if I pick this one up like this, can you see me picking it up? I don't know if no. Zoom will pick. Okay. No, I can't. Okay. So know that when I pick visit, open link in new window, what it does is it creates an entirely new window that then has that in it. So if you're looking at it now, I'm not sure which one it's gonna show you or if it's gonna show you both. Um, looks like it's just gonna show you champagne.org. Okay, it's gonna show you that one, not this one. So if I jump between them, you're not seeing this, are you? No. Okay, that's okay. Okay, just know that um, basically opening a new window allows you to minimize or move the two windows so you can put them next to each other. Um, and if you're looking at your screenshots, which will show you this. Um, we go down here just a second. So I'll give you a good idea. So when you're opening multiple tabs, just click that plus sign and it opens a second tab. And then it looks like this. When you're opening a window like this, where they're separate. <clears throat> so when I open link in new window, it makes it separate. So here's our home page on in one window. And here is our uh, expanded hours and services in another window, okay? So then you can, you can manipulate and use both windows and do things where you can set them side by side in case you wanna look at both of them at the same time, okay? So, and to open a new window, uh, the keyboard shortcut, there's a keyboard shortcut for that as well, um, but you can also just use the, the right click on the mouse and say, open a new window. Okay, any questions about that? I'm sorry, I can't actually demonstrate that live. Because um, I don't see any questions. Okay, Zoom won't really let us demonstrate that live. Um, okay, cool. Okay, we're gonna switch gears just a little bit to talking more about searching and search engine tools and how your search results will be presented when you're searching for something. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and Let's do this. Okay. Do, do, do. Okay. So we'll use Chrome again. Okay. And so here is our full view of the champagne.org website. We're going to go ahead and let's use, let's use Bing. So we're going to use Bing as our search engine. Bing is Microsoft's product. And if you see right here, you can see wherever you see a magnifying glass that doesn't have a plus or minus in it, it's going to mean search. If it has a plus or minus, it's usually zoom in or zoom out. Uh, but since we see this plus, this doesn't have a plus or minus, we know that's our search engine. So we can go ahead and search for something here and then take a look at our search results. Um, anybody have anything they specifically want us to search for as an example? If you do, you can put it in the chat. Um, since Rebecca and I both really like cats and we talk a lot about our cats on these tech workshops, um, I usually do cat food as the example of a very broad general search. Okay, so when I'm looking for cat food. So what I'm gonna see first is gonna come up here. I can choose images, shopping, videos, maps, or news. Those are those specific categories that Microsoft Bing will um, break out your search results into. That is true on other browsers at, or other um, search engines as well. That would be true with uh, Google as a search engine, DuckDuckGo, Yahoo, um, pretty much all of them let you break it down that way. Okay. Um, it's also going to show me that right now it's using my location where it says results near Champaign, Illinois. That means it's using my current location to tell me um, if there are places close to me that have what I'm looking for. Okay. If we start here, we can, okay, um, Chewy, Chewy.com, got it. Now note, down here in the, right at the very edge here, it says ad, but you see how small that is? It's not super obvious that this is an ad. Now, maybe you want the ad, maybe you do wanna save 50% on cat food and you wanna go through Chewy to get that 50% that off price. It's just good to know that this is an ad. And usually a lot of the search engines will put the ads at the top and then put the regular non-ad results 
um, down a little bit further. And a lot of times what it is with ad ads is of course they're getting, you know, they get, they get, um, it's basically like giving preferential treatment because there's a monetary gain for Google or Bing or, you know, whatever search engine you're using um, for them to put those up at the top. If you click on it, they get something back from it. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to come down past all these things that say ads to down to here where it says cat food. This is Amazon. It at least doesn't say that it's an ad. Um, it gives me the date that it was last updated. And you can see that this is actually the website address for it right here. And then it gives you a little, like a little snippet, a little summary or snippet of what's included in that website, okay? Now let's say maybe I wasn't looking to buy cat food, but I really wanted to learn how to make my own cat food. So something I might do to change my search would be add the word recipe. And let's say I spell it wrong because let's say I, I didn't spell it correctly. So it's gonna pick up cat food rest. And look at this, it already says recipes. And down here, it's gonna ask, did I mean cat food recipes? If I really only wanted the recipes for with it spelled incorrectly, I could pick that too. But that's one of the nice things that a lot of the search engines will do for you is that they will try to guess what you actually meant to spell or meant to say which is kind of nice. Um, and here we go, DIY homemade cat food. Let's see, healthy recipes. That's also coming from Chewy, which is interesting, but maybe it's um, maybe it's um, like articles on how to create your own. Um, let's see, let's see. And then here's something where it says 10 homemade cat food recipes every cat lover will <clears throat> excuse me, every cat will love. So that might be something where I'm like, okay, that sounds interesting. Um, you know, excited cats, home prepared meals. So you get the idea. So it also gives you videos where you could um, make a recipe for cat food. Um, and if you want to, you know, like research on things, um, cat food, you could also do researching. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out about your browse, about your search engines here is that when you're looking here, you can um, do advanced searching too, where you get the chance to narrow res narrow your results by um, date, and you might be able to rule out certain if certain words keep appearing that you don't want, you can rule those out. Um, so if you go to and you put an advanced search with Bing, you should get advanced search options. And then you can find out things like if you add a plus symbol or um, if you put quotations around something, you can use what are known as Boolean operators, which are you know the and or not this. Um, so you can add those things in if you want. So you don't have to stick with just the basic searching. If that's not helping, not helping you find what you're looking for, you can do those advanced search steps instead. Okay. And I just want to make sure you know that too. So um, you also usually at the bottom of the first page will have related searches for cat food recipes. So sometimes um, you're the algorithm that's basically using your, taking your search string will also say, okay, maybe you actually want um, to look at these relevant, you know, related searches. So, and maybe one of these is more specific and actually more like what you want. So it's good to also take a look at the related searches. Okay. All right. Any questions about that? I don't see anything. Okay. I do recommend you also look and um, take a moment to evaluate the rest of the, the things before you click on them. So for example, the 10, this seems interesting. If I click on it, I'm gonna go, okay, excitedcats.com. Uh, homemade cat food recipes, and I can look at the, when it was last updated, um, you know, and then I can kind of see, and then there's lots of ads that will show up too. So you can see it says ad right here. Um, if you look on the sides, it's usually coupons, clipping, if ads, things like that. Um, so you want to be careful when you're navigating to make sure you don't click on any of those extra ads that are on the side um, or down here at the bottom, because those are not necessarily um, what you actually want. Sometimes they say download and they look like what you really want to download too. So you got to be careful. 
um, and then you have these pop-up things. Okay, so just something to also consider. All righty, okie dokie. Any questions about searching? So just remember that you can do that. Um, if I search with Google, um, I can also, let's do cat food recipes. Um, with Google, the tools right here where it says more, um, you could pick a couple of other things like books and flights and stuff. If you click on tools, that's going to let you do those um, custom date ranges and whether you want all results or verbatim. So, okay. So, and you can also do, you know, advanced, advanced search with Google. And then you get all those other things that you can possibly rule out or do um, to get a more specific search. Okay, so it's just kind of like a, a brief uh, tip of the iceberg on um, search and uh, searching with the uh, different services online. Okay, any questions? So far, so good. Okay. The next section I want to talk about is bookmarks and favorites. And um, we're close to the end here. So we're just going to talk about bookmarks and favorites and then um, keyboard shortcuts and clearing your history. That's what we all will talk about today. OK, so bookmarks and favorites. <clears throat> if you see along here, we have some favorites that we've already saved in our bookmarks bar here. So if I wanted to save something as a favorite, for example, let's say, let's just go to Facebook, for example. So let's say I wanted to make sure that I could easily get to Facebook. I wouldn't have to type in facebook.com every time. I could just find it easily and I wanna put it here in my bookmarks bar. Well, the first thing I can do is come up here to where this little star is up here and star that and say, add bookmark. It's going to add the bookmark here across the top. If you see just underneath the address bar where the book, what we call the bookmark bar is right there. And it's going to add that Facebook link. I could also categorize it here, give it a different name if I wanted to full, give it the folder right now is the bookmarks bar. I could make several different folders here. Um, let's say I'm someone who likes to knit and crochet and I find a whole bunch of free patterns online. Uh, maybe I would have a folder that's specifically for knitting and crocheting and keep track of all those websites that I like for knitting and crocheting in there. Okay, so you can you can um, you can organize your bookmarks how you want within folders as well. So we're just going to go ahead and do top level today and say done. And then that's going to add it there for us. OK, and that's all there is to it for adding a bookmark or a favorite. Same idea with the other browsers um, with Chrome. It's the star with um, Edge. It's also a star and with um, Firefox, it's also a star. So wherever you see the stars and they're usually in the same place, um, then you can find it that way. Now, when you want to find your bookmarks, let's say you've you've made enough that you can't um, you can't keep them up here anymore, or you want to just look at the ones you've made that you've put in folders. You can go to your three dots over here, and you can go down to bookmarks specifically, and then you can see the things that you've already bookmarked. Okay, so it's very e. And then you have a ma a bookmark manager where you can again you can organize and sort and put them you know, categorize them and everything. So, okay. So that way, if you have something you like, but it has a really long address, you don't have to remember that website address every time if you put it in your bookmarks. You can just automatically go to it. Okay. Questions about that? I don't see any, unless okay. you see any on your side. <laughs> I do not, but I will say, um, this is something I use very often here at work when I'm starting to research um, something like, say, a new tech workshop topic that I, and I want to point out um, additional resources for that topic or things. I'll bookmark a lot of stuff and then go back and read them after I've done kind of an initial search and initial dive into the, into the topic. Then I will go back and actually read through things after I've bookmarked them. Okay, so that's one thing I do. Okay. All right, let's talk about clearing the history. So a couple of different ways to clear your history. In Chrome, I can click on my three little dots and go to history and then click history or do control plus H 
and then get all the history of what I've looked at. So here's where we were searching for washing machines and things. And I can hit clear browsing data over here. And then I can clear it from the last 24 hours or however longer, things like that, OK? And when you do that, you clear your browsing data. Um, it's just kind of good, like good housekeeping practice to do that um, occasionally. And you can do that in all three, all three browsers, too. And sometimes if something isn't working that well, you want to do something called clearing your cache. And you can come here and go to it from history. And you can clear your browsing data. You can also clear your cookies and cache images and files. OK? And that's at the same point. Um, I do want to mention, too, that you can search your settings. So if something said clear your cache, you can search for your cache and then clear your browsing data and you'll know that cache is in here. OK, so that's something that's nice within within Chrome, too. OK, um, it's the same thing in the other browsers. Let me jump back to oops. Let me jump into Firefox so I can show you how that looks. So if I'm in Firefox and I want to clear my history, I can hit here instead of three little dots, it's three little lines. I can come down to history. And then I can say clear recent history. And then say OK, and then it'll clear it. OK, again, so it's very similar and things are usually even in the same spots over here on the um, right hand side where you're going to find your settings and the things that you can customize or control. OK. All right, okay, I'm gonna stop that. And then we'll jump back into our PowerPoint here do, 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 after we've cleared our history. So again, the handout just kind of walks you through making sure you notice where the ads are and the search tools and tips about if you've misspelled the word um, and finding stuff at the bottom of the pages using advanced search um, where you can just type in advanced search. And then bookmarks and favorites. Also with your additional, um, here's through Edge. So with Edge, it looks slightly different because it's a star with the little um, little lines after it. And they call it favorites instead of bookmarks. Okay. Any questions about bookmarks and favorites or um, clearing out your history? I don't see anything in the chat. OK, um, so the last little section I have here is just a little bit about um, browser shortcut, uh, browser keyboard shortcuts, excuse me. Um, these are going to be true across all browsers. So uh, it won't matter if you're in Safari or Firefox or Chrome or Edge, or I think even the new one that I heard about was Brave was a new browser. Um, even that one, these will work in. Uh, so one of the ones that I really want to call your attention to is this find on page, which is the control and F. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing that real quick. And I'm going to demo a couple of these so you can see how useful they are. So let me go back to, let's go back into Firefox. OK, so here we are in Firefox. Let's go ahead and search for Champagne Public Library again. OK, and we'll go to our home page. And let's say we know what we're looking for is we want to get a library card, right? So instead of having to search all over the site to see if I see the word library card anywhere, I can hit Control and F on my keyboard. And then down in the bottom corner here at the left hand side, it's going to sell me find in page and I can type in library card. And then you'll notice here, I'm hoping you can see this, that it highlighted get a library card. So if I do this again. Yeah, it shows the highlight. OK, highlighted it in green. So that helps me find it immediately. And I go, oh, OK, now I now I know how to get a library card. I go to right here and then I can learn all about getting a card. So you can use the keyboard shortcut control F or you can also you can use up here. You can go into here and do find in page. Same idea. It opens the same thing down in the bottom if you're on Firefox. Um, if you're in Chrome, it appears, jump into here and get back into Chrome. Uh, let me see. Oh, here's Edge. I'll start with Edge. So here's Edge. Same idea. Control F, library card. Oops, let me jump in here. Library card. So if you see it popped up at the top corner and the top here, library card. And then it says get a, and now it's orange, but it says get a library card. 
Okay, so that's one way to kind of speed up your search uh, when you're on a website. If you're looking for a specific keyword or phrase or something um, to make sure that it's actually it's in there somewhere and it's exactly where you need it to be, um, you can find it pretty quickly that way. Okay, so that's what I definitely wanted to show you. Um, I also want to show you the zoom in zoom out uh, because I think that is also incredibly important uh, when you're on a website. So if I'm on this site here, and let's say this is a little too hard for me to read, I can come up to my three dots. And again here, zoom, it's at 100% now. You see there's a minus and a plus. I can hit the plus and zoom in or hit the minus and zoom out. I think this is very important, especially if you have different sizes of screens that you're looking at stuff with, you can make it bigger. Um, it's a little bit like if you have a smartphone and you pinch um, to expand or pinch to contract um, sites and things on your smartphones with that gesture. It's very similar to that. Um, the keyboard shortcut for that is control plus and control minus on your keyboard. Very useful that I, I use it all the time every day um, when I'm working on stuff on the web to make stuff easier for me to see or if I'm uh, I need it to be further away so I can put more stuff you know and do sites next to each other um, it's just one of those that I use all the time okay um, sometimes if you accidentally go into full screen mode this is fun um, if I go into full screen let me see I'll go into full screen mode which is f11 if you accidentally hit that button and suddenly everything goes away at the top and you don't have any of those browser controls you're like what do I do how do I how do I get back how do I do anything um to undo you can hit f11 and that'll get your controls back okay so that's another one that happens a lot I think where we accidentally hit it or bump it and we need to get back to having our ability to screen here okay okay now you see here also my zoom Here's that, that magnifying glass with a minus sign in it. That means this is my zoom. So if I tap on that, I can reset it and see how it's changing to a plus or a minus up there. Um, again, like I said, search is a, a magnifying glass with no plus or minus in it or near it, but zooming in and out, magnifying glass with a plus or a minus sign. Okay. Okay. And I've done a lot of talking now. <laughs> So if anybody would like to ask any other questions or be unmuted, so you can chat or talk about stuff or tell us, you know, some of your your tricks that you might use or that you've discovered along the way, um, feel free. And the only last thing I had for today, um, I'm going to stop sharing that and go back to the PowerPoint just so I can show you a couple of other things real quick. So this is our browser keyboard shortcut list. Um, and this is again in that handout. And then some terms to know that I've kind of that I've mentioned. The cache is the storage space for temporary files. It makes a device run faster, but sometimes you do have to clear it out. Um, same with cookies. Um, they help keep track of your visits. Uh, it's a small text file with some info about your visit. Sometimes it includes, you know, if you've created a shopping cart and then you walk away from that and you come back to it, if it's still there, that's probably because of a cookie. Um, encryption is information that's converted to code. So for example, your address would, would be, instead of being your actual address, you know, like here it would be 200 East or 200 West Green Street. Um, it would be changed into uh, numbers that then are changed into the code with encryption. Hypertext just means uh, the text that's displayed on the computer screen. So hypertext usually has the underline or it will turn into a hand when you press on it. And then a couple of additional resources. Okay. Uh, next month, getting started with internet part two, that's when we'll talk more about safety and security. We'll go over H, what the HTTPS means um, and some best practices. We'll talk about streaming services and then about uh, locating some recommended recommendations for podcasts and how to discover new podcasts. Okay, then here's my information um, and my email and my phone. Feel free to reach out to us anytime. We're happy to answer any questions. Uh, we also have the librarian uh, at champagne.org address, which uh, is checked anytime that the library is open. Um, so you can also contact us via that. 
And then you can watch this webinar and others on our YouTube channel, which is champagne.org slash YouTube. Um, and that'll get you there. And then here's some information that librarian at champagne.org. Uh, you can also book a librarian, which means you set up a consultation with a staff member for 30 minutes or uh, up to an hour usually uh, of time with one of us to help you go over a technology topic. Or we can also do that for other, other things like career and business and um, all sorts of stuff. So, okay. That is all I have today. So any questions or things we can also answer for you? So. Nope. I think I think it was a very, very good presentation. Thank you. I especially appreciated the right click menu on search results and all that. I always yes. forget about that starting a new window or a new tab. So that, that was really great. Thank and you. I'm, I'm watching this from Colorado. So uh, oh. I, I wanted to make sure that this would work because I, I work, uh, I volunteer with an organization here in Colorado that teaches computers and and technology to seniors so excellent and and I've had people from all other parts of the country too so I just wanted to see if this would work and it worked well and I learned some stuff too great oh I'm happy to hear it yeah, yeah we love we love when pe people come from all over yeah it's uh, good that's one of the nice things about zoom is that um people can attend from uh far away distances too yeah, that's which I think true. makes that's it really cool, nice the last yeah. class I did, I had people from Chicago and South Dakota and Raleigh, North Carolina. And so it, it was Excellent. Fun. Good, good, good job, you guys. But Thank you. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, feel free to follow up with us anytime, too. Um, you know, if you want uh, additional resources with the handouts and things like that that we do here, we're happy, happy to share that. It's one of the nice things about working in libraries is that we're all willing to share. <laughs> right. That's your job, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for thanks for attending today. Yep, bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Well, I will go ahead and um, say goodbye, and I hope that you'll uh, attend next week's uh, Getting Started with the Internet 2, uh, if you like, and uh, we'll get the video up as soon as we can. Thank you, everybody. Right. Thank you, everyone.